quite often we believe that the current horizon we see from our current position is the only horizon there is. And we don't even attempt to take another step because we think the horizon isn't going to change. But trust me, it does. Welcome everybody. My name is Arm. Today I would like to talk about overtraining and overtraining has many aspects. This is a never ending story. It occurs to many people uh, in all walks of life. So masters, beginners, hobbyists, pros, Olympics. It doesn't matter. You're going to be affected by it eventually. Today I want to pick one specific topic. Overtraining, how to fix it. So I put together a list of a couple of things that I always do. In an ideal world, you would keep a training log. That means you write down in some ways, could be on a, on a notepad, it could be on an app, whatever you have. And the most important thing is that you write down how the training that you currently are doing affects you. That's what I'm, I'm interested in most. So in my training log, I'm super curious about, okay, this is what you did and this is what it did to you. I know that a lot of, a lot of coaches write training plans and they say, hey, if you can't follow the plan, you're not motivated enough, you don't perform, um, you lack discipline, you like blah, blah, blah. Sometimes that's all true. I get it, that's true. But quite often the plan just doesn't suit the person or it suits the person, but it doesn't suit the person at that very moment. So what you need to do is find out how, how the training that you've done has actually affected you. What has this done to you? We're demotivated, motivated, but without being, oh, that training didn't go well, everything's bad. I'm, I'm talking about progressive overload and everybody knows overtraining leads to demotivation because you can't pull things through anymore. Things that were super easy last week are not super easy anymore. Revise your training log. Which sessions affected you in which way? And then go back. Are there periods where you find out, okay, I, I did a lot of this and that stuff and I kind of felt bad afterwards because I never really came back from it. I, I never really recovered from it. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I need to take more break. That's an important thing. But I know that this is kind of unfair because a lot of people typically don't keep a log. I'm aware of that. If you do not have a log, which I know most people don't, because either you keep too much or you keep nothing. But nobody keeps just the basics that are relevant. What do you do? You sit down and you take an honest inventory of the training that you've done and how it has affected you. So essentially, you go back um, just the last couple of sessions. Then you go back the last couple of weeks. Then you go back honestly the last couple of months. How many training sessions have you done? What were the target zones? Did you have a target? Did you have a strategy? If you had a strategy, how did it affect you? You know, all these things are interesting. You need to know what you've done. And sometimes it's hard to take inventory within an hour. Sometimes taking an inventory means, I remember well the last three sessions. Okay, and give it a bit of time. Sleep over it. Sleep two nights over it. Come back. Half, the, half that sheet of paper, and I like to do things in a written way. You, you got to put things from your mind on paper in order to remember them. There's a good reason why people of all ages have actually written down things because whatever you have on paper does not need to rest in, in the presence of your mind all the time. There's, there are different stages of mind. The things you always, I gotta remember this, blocks you from thinking of different things. So write it down and sit over it, sleep over it. And you will see over the next couple of days you will come up with quite a few things that you remember. Oh yeah, I had this one hard session. Perfect. If it's not in chronological order, so what? It doesn't need to be. But think of the sessions that you remember. That was a really good session. I pushed so hard. But the next day, I don't know, kind of uh, something hurt. These are the things. Write them down. These are... It, it is certainly not as good as a training log, but it will certainly help you to remember someone. Change your training strategy if you have one. So changing your training strategy means for most people just getting a strategy after all. 
there's there are different objectives people have some people like to do okay i just want to be fit i just want to lose weight i just want to um look look toned i just want to you know be attractive that's one part the looks the feeling now a lot of people say i, I want to be competitive not because to say i have to make this and this metal for most for most rowers it is the lifestyle of rowing that is important i want to be in competitive shape I want to compete in a race whenever I like. I want to compete three times per year because this is my personality, because this is what I like to do. This is, um, I, I want to feel like a competitive athlete because I feel healthy and strong and fit. That's, a, that's an objective. And some people say, hey, I, I just really want to make it to the Olympics or I don't care about Olympics anymore. Nobody cares. I care about world championships. I care about ocean crossing. Some specific events you would like to compete in and you would like to compete at well okay three completely different objectives but everything requires strategy and different strategies strategy is important when it comes to uh, planning a full year a lot of people simply don't know what they're going to do in march they somewhat have an idea but there's no clear plan what you need to know is okay now um today is february 16. what am i going to do in june i don't know maybe there's a race Maybe I should some maybe I should be doing some intensities right now. That's no strategy. That's guesswork. And I know that there's the attitude of some people that actually works. I do what I feel like doing today. That is absolutely legit. But then there's a trap to it as well. You have to you have to understand what, what high intensity training does with your body. It makes you feel good because your body uh, emits endorphins and, and endorphins make you feel great afterwards <laughs> while, while, while you work hard you don't feel that great but if you do this all the time you simply um your aerobic capacity diminishes for some sports you say okay that's not important it is important if you plan on having a speedy recovery capacity so you recover quicker from intensity to intensity session um, it is important to prevent injuries that's a huge part if if you have if you don't have aerobic capacity or not sufficient aerobic capacity you, you cannot do as many high intensity sessions as you like or as needed whatever is the case and you cannot recover fast enough between the sessions and you're probably prone to injuries these three things usually go hand in hand so the strategy should tell you on day one okay this is day one of the season usually for rowers in the northern hemisphere starts in october and you say, okay, day one, where I'm going to be on, on, on day 250. You should have a rough idea. You don't have to have it planned out day by day because things change and you need, you need to be able to respond. But if you don't have a clear cut strategy, it's very, very difficult to understand. Okay, that's my strategy. It may be a bad strategy, but you need one. Okay, now I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on strength. Now I'm going to focus on endurance. I know that strength and endurance, basic endurance, that goes well but high intensity and strength that's a bit tricky so maybe i'm not connected later on okay good these are the thoughts you get most people have a structure for one year if they have one but very few people actually have a strategy for four years and i see this actually being the case with a lot of um, olympic candidates everybody tries to perform every single year well most people take the post-olympic year off okay good if you've already competed at the olympics but year number two you really want to perform at three you want to perform and four you want to perform outperform there is no such thing as consistent outperforming if if you don't have a plan behind it good coaches usually plan in the Olympics, which is the cycle from one olympic game one olympic games to the next ones i'm not sure if olympic games going to be that relevant in the future honestly but for now they still are because of simply the way funding systems work in many countries I know you guys in the US have a different system, but in Europe, it's a big thing. If you're not in an Olympic bowl class, essentially, there's no funding, almost none. Yeah. So you need to plan from season to season to have a progressive buildup, also in loads and intensities and everything. So most people, and this is why Olympic Games have kind of their own rules. Most people are over the top in, in the Olympic year. That's a big issue with many teams. You cannot overperform every single year and expect to grow consecutively consecutive growth and continuous growth requires that there's a 
a strategy in response to how you respond to the training. If there's a, a plan and you kind of have to cope with it, it doesn't really work and uh, you're expected to perform year by year by year, that's a guaranteed failure. There are a few exceptions and sometimes these are called the talented ones, but trust me, planet Earth doesn't have enough people that are talented enough <laughs> to cope with this. Anticipate fatigue. That's a big, that's a big factor. If you want to get out of, of overtraining, you have to anticipate fatigue. In occasional cold, phases of slow development. Th that goes hand in hand with the continuous growth myth. And it doesn't exist. It just doesn't work. You have to anticipate that sometimes you will have lack of motivation. It just happens. You're not a machine. So don't put yourself under that much pressure. There's a fine line between having an intrinsic motivation to follow through and being motivated every day. Nobody is motivated every day. I, I don't know anybody. You get up, you just have, I just don't feel well. Is it the moon, the stars? I, I don't care what it is. I just, I, 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 I just don't feel well. Accept it, it's a fact. So the point is to follow through nevertheless. So your goal is gonna be- Goal's gonna be big enough. All right, I get it. But your goal's gonna be big enough that you take a smart step back and say, I don't think I can handle that session. Something's going wrong. You talk to your coach. That's a big, big point. Right now, that you are an overtrained, what you need to do is accept that you're not lazy. There's no lack of motivation. There's no, there's no lack of passion. Well, maybe slowly. But there's a lack of accepting your body and your mind that you're not a machine. Accepting that you need a break. Accepting that you are worth it that you take a break. That's important. A better break doesn't mean to do nothing, but that's one of the next points. When I started to prepare for this video, I actually looked at what other people said about overtraining, and I read something that couldn't be more wrong if there's a word like this, in my opinion. If you're in overtraining, stop training. No, no. There's a massive difference between explosive athletes and endurance athletes. If you have done too much and you are an endurance athlete and you stop training, you simply don't have the required turnover in your entire body, organism, light, light motion to actually recover. It just doesn't work. And that light motion will help you to actually get rid of all the stuff that's floating around your body. Every time you do high intensity training, a ton of lactate builds up, which is normal once you are in an aerobic state. Usually lactate is being reused, but then it's not reused. So, and if you don't have enough turnover, that lactate simply doesn't disappear. I mean, eventually, slowly, but that's too slow. And what happens is that it changes the pH value of the blood. Acid state is not healthy for anybody, and that's why prone to injuries. But stopping workouts is, is counterproductive because it also makes you lose your identity. There's a psychological factor to this. What you need to do is do light motion if you're the typical endurance athlete. If you understand, am I endurance, am I explosive? A very simple question. Do you like the long stuff or do you like the short and hard stuff? Uh, kind of like both. Okay, you're probably in the middle, so experiment. It's that simple. Don't make things overcomplicated. If you are in, uh, if you're in the field of being a clearly uh, explosive athlete, what you should do is take a day off and take an easy session the day afterwards. You need off days. This is just how you're wired. You feel better than the classic explosive athletes. I recommend everybody experiment. There are the mixed types that are actually endurance by nature, but explosive trained, and vice versa. Explosive athletes and endurance trained by nature. Um, quite often happens in rowing, actually, because in rowing you need both anyway. So that's an interesting combo. Experiment. Try it out. In order to fix overtraining, um, you need a phase of about two to three weeks, where you need to stay true to your virtues of training. That's important. Most people make the mistake, overtraining, I just give it all up. That was my case. I didn't know better. I went from 12 to 14 sessions per week to nothing, out of frustration. I gained a lot of weight and I lost my identity. I didn't like myself anymore. That was a bad phase. And actually, it took me a long time to recover. It took me a long time to find out that I've lost my identity. That's a big thing. You know? if, if you've seen some of my recent videos, or since I started that channel, 
Um, you've probably seen me um, being overweight for an athlete. That's a fact. It, it's, there's nothing, to, to, um, there's nothing to, to be nice about it. It's simply a fact. I've simply worked too hard, slept too little. I've, I've actually neglected my own needs for sleep, um, for, for breaks. And I neglected my identity as, as an athlete. You can't. You cannot neglect yourself endlessly. So that's that's something very important that I want to pass on to you, to, to you watching this. Don't make the same mistake. Don't lose your identity as an athlete. I, I when I stopped uh, high performance program, I was frustrated also with the coaching you had and everything else. But don't lose your identity. Stay with the training. Do something different. Sometimes another tip I can give you: change sports. Stick with rowing every once in a while, just do it for fun. Um, and it, even if it's not fun, just hop in a boat at least once every two or three weeks. Don't lose it completely, that's important. Um, and then do other things. Go climbing. That's not, that's not helpful for your low aerobic ability, but it's fun. And it's good for core. Um, cycling, if you like that. Ice skating, if you like that. Um, running, be careful, don't do too much too quickly, but if you like it, go for it. Swimming, low intensity swimming. Um, hiking, taking three hour hikes, five hour hikes, two hour walks, whatever you prefer. Um, forget about intensities, just do something you enjoy. And that's something I often found with rowers who are too much into the, in, into the game and, and all that counts is rowing. You can, you, you then tend to overthink things. Don't do that. Enjoy, the, enjoy nature. Roll. Forget about technique. Forget about, don't even put on your heart rate monitor. Forget the speed coach. Don't look at it. Um, if, you, if you don't really have to be available all the time. You know what? This happens so often to me. Um, something runs out of battery. I don't know. If, if, if you are a content creator out there, content creator, what a word. If you put out YouTube videos, how many times has recording stopped either in the camera because you got the 30 minute limit or SD card was full and I don't know why these cameras and devices, this is my audio recording, why don't I shout at you and say, hey, I don't work anymore, Ooh. and then you can just save the last bit of energy to tell me it's not working. Okay, now you should be able to hear me well again. Sorry for the bad audio in between. One of the best advices I can give you is forget intensities, forget your heart rate monitor, don't even look at your speed coach, just enjoy the, enjoy the process. Once you've been an athlete, it's very difficult to change your identity. I haven't heard of athletes who were athletes when they were teenies or in their twins who became alcoholics and heavy smokers. Probably there are and, and if you know somebody, don't put it in the comments. But that's probably an exception. You don't really make money with rowing. But what you get out of it is exceptional health and an attitude to work for something without immediate reward. If, if I had the choice and I could hire somebody who's been in a sport like rowing, well, I know there's not a lot of money in the game, but they, they do it and they can sacrifice a lot for something that they may possibly reach or not, over somebody who has done sport where you just make a lot of money when you do it. I would always prefer the person who's had, yeah, who's had to make a lot of sacrifices without immediate reward. It's an attitude. It, it shapes your attitude. All right, I'm getting off topic here. It's important to enjoy the process of motion, to, to be okay with not hitting target watts. That's, it's the pressure. A lot with overtraining, I think, has to do with um, putting yourself under uh, silly pressure. That is not necessary. And once you're out of that, you can start with strategizing the year. Go back into your training log, see what you've done. That's important. Um, but, but first, you need, to, you need to give yourself at least two to three weeks. Just enjoy the motion. And, and I'm, I'm now I'm, kids, don't listen. Screw you. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's the hardest cussing I'm using on this channel. Hell yeah, I, 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 I didn't give a crap about 
hitting 150, 250, 300 watts. It is not important. Go, go, go out on the water if you can. Listen to the sound of the water. Listen to it. Look at the birds. Enjoy the roughest conditions. Say, how oh, I, 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 I fought through the rough conditions. That was an awful session today. Great, I'm back. Let's take a shower. Something else. That's important. But it's important to stay with the game. Don't lose it completely. Then start to play and strategize. <laughs> Something that I had to learn the hard way. Quite often we believe that the current horizon we see from our current position is the only horizon there is. And we don't even attempt to take another step because we think the horizon isn't going to change. But trust me, it does. If you are in a desert and you take just one step, does your horizon change or not? It does. You may not notice it right away, but it does because you just moved one step. So your visibility is the same, but you're one step further. So you potentially see different, different things. And that's important to understand. The more you move on, the more your horizon changes. And what you think is impossible now may be very well within reach three steps further. So don't, don't take your current position as the only position there ever will be. You simply cannot judge because your current horizon makes it very well plausible that it may not be possible. All right, take just one step and everybody can take one step. Everybody can. And just the next step may open another field. And what if it doesn't? You always know the next step broadens your horizon. That's kind of mean because you know, okay, if I take the next step, maybe, and then you will enjoy the process again. Why did you start with the sports? Because you liked it. Well, you can always come back to it. I don't like it anymore. There was too much pressure. Nobody put pressure on you. You were the one who thought that if somebody tried to pressure you, you have to pressure yourself. Nobody was next to you with, with a loaded pistol. So if you don't perform, I'm going to kill you. No. You were afraid to be kicked out of the team. But ultimately, it's you as a person that counts. So what I can, what I can give in as an, as an advice, take your time to find the roots of what you love about the sports. And sometimes it helps to move away, but not completely. It's the best advice I can give you. I've worked with quite a lot of athletes and one of them, very interesting story, I'm not going to mention his name, but you will find his testimonial on, on a website actually. Um, he was able to be in the 550s on the Eric over 2K road, road college. Uh, he actually won the RA and contacted me because he barely made it under seven on the 2K. He was simply burned out to max. And it took me six, six to eight months, I think, to bring him back. And I think a year later, he was back under six minutes. So that is possible, but you have to take the steps progressively. It doesn't have to be with me, it can be with anybody. Who knows what they're doing there are a lot of people who are good at that so just get help that's the best advice i can give you all righty thank you very much for watching i hope it was interesting i hope you got you got something out of it and i'm going to put this video first on the arm training member platform if you want to join it's a couple bucks a month you see everything at free and on top you have access to um, the zoom live recorded sessions you can look at them and if you want to see what kind of programs we offer, just go to armtraining.com. If you just give this video a like and a thumbs up once it's on YouTube, that's awesome. And if you can give me feedback and say, Arm, this video has actually helped me, that's the best reward I can get. I wish you all the best. And remember, one step further broadens your horizon. Woo! Pop, pop.
Pop, 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 pop,